Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia video. Today we're going to do a should you pull on the Jesse and Snow banners, which are just dropping in a couple of days, right? Um, so first we'll just start off and talk about any notable spheres and calls, um, which I do think there are, especially on, I'm going to say the snow side here. Um, on the snow side, Saz's um, sphere is very good. It's a D-slot attack up, which is a very common sphere I'll recommend. So if you get any extra EXs, that's definitely notable. Um, Kurosami has a very good call, one of the better calls in the game that I still like using. Uh, it does Ice Enchant, which has some value, and it has a, um, when it gets to max stacks, it is a 30% HP damage up. So Kurosami is like a very nice go-to call. Now, I think Kurosami, like when he first came out, was one of the best calls in the game. I think there are enough calls that like do similar types of things or are better in different ways. I don't think you need to chase Kurosami like I recommend you chase Raijin on the last banner. Um, but it's a very nice call if you happen to get it if you go in on this banner, right? Um, on the other side, um, in terms of calls, um, I think some people like to use Noctis's call because I think it can give you some of that free turn cheese if you like that. It's not one I use a lot. And then I do think um, Barrett's call does allow you to get crit damage if you need crit damage. But these aren't like calls I'm using all the time or that I really care about a lot. So I don't think they're like chaseable. I don't think there's any calls in here that are worth chasing. Um, and then spheres, once again, never chase those, but like, I think Saz EXs are definitely something you might want to hold on to if you get them. Um, and if I remember Jesse's sphere might be okay too. I don't remember off the top of my head what it is. Um, but nothing I would go crazy and like chase, right? Um, so let's talk about the characters themselves. Um, and we'll start by talking about Jesse. So Jesse is basically a ranged damage dealer and she is a turn manipulation delay character. Um, and with her rework, she's definitely getting more damage, but they did give her a new overhead buff called like mounted explosive device and it comes with her BT. Um, and what this is going to do, is going to give her a special HP attack that can do more turn manipulation. Um, and it stores damage based on how much brave damage the party deals. So it basically stores brave. Um, and then what it can do is when you do the HP attack, it'll turn manipulate. It does like three dumps scaled on what is held in the overhead. So it's a nice new like little tech thing they gave her, right? Um, Jesse, I would say she definitely falls into like the slot three utility role, like for sure, right? So if you like using delay and turn manipulation um, strats, she can be a nice fun character to grab. I will say Jesse is a very fun character, but she's definitely not a must pull. And I definitely would advise most players to probably skip this banner, to be honest. Because once again, Baird and Noctis, like LD only, I don't think I would recommend either of them as well. Noctis is a character, like Noctis isn't bad. But I think Noctis gets a lot of value from the BT being giving him off turn damage. Um, so without the BT, LD only, I mean, you can get his, he does have a really nice LD effect. Steel Pirouette that can let like the party kind of steal free turns, but... We've got so many like other characters that can help with that. Like you could just bring Realm and you can get tons of free turns that way. Um, we have speedy characters that steal turns. Like I just feel like getting Noctis LD only here isn't really necessary. Barrett is actually just pretty bad right now. He's an LD only character. Um, and like I said, Jesse, she's a little bit more niche. I think if she's a favorite or you like her playstyle, definitely grab her. She's going to be good. Um, but she is also a character that a lot of players already have. Um, she already has her FRBT, so she's just going to be a nice free upgrade for me. So I'll definitely take it. But I don't think newer players should jump in on this banner at all. I think there's other banners I'd prioritize. Um, then over here, we have Snow, Saz, and Kurosame. Um, Kurosame, I think, actually, LD only could be okay. Because um, he does have some nice off-turn damage. And, he, and you are still going to be able to, with his LD get his really nice HP damage up. So you're still getting like a lot of the nice things you want from Kurosami. Um, I don't think you would want to chase him here, but he is, I would say, a serviceable LD only character. Um, Saz, he is a support character, but I'm going to say this right now, like his <laughs> his damage is really bad. I actually like recently used him because um, I think one of the mission quests wanted guns. So I'm like, sure, we'll bring Saz into like the Lufenia, like one of the easier ones. And he just does like no damage. Um, his support is okay. Uh, but he's not doing like any force charging or anything like that. So Saz is honestly kind of a throwaway right now. Um, like I said, I think the best thing about him is that sphere if you get his EX. Um, then we have Snow. So if you're unfamiliar with Snow, um, he is a, I would call him a pseudo tank. And what I mean by that is he does a lot of good tank things, but he doesn't necessarily make you feel invincible. He's the type of tank where he does do locking. 
So he'll take in single target damage. He's pretty good at self-sustaining and not dying. Um, but then he does a lot of like HP and brave uh, reduction to the party. So he kind of like gives you nice buffs and auras that help the party take less HP damage, um, to help you take less brave damage. But he doesn't feel as safe as like say a Gladio or a Cater or a Kelger where they're just flat out negating damage. He can still take damage. The party can still take damage, but overall, like I would say he is a serviceable tank. Is he the best tank in the game? No, but he does bring other things that are very good. What his main mechanic is involving his BT and now his FR kind of leans into it is a lot of like max brave uh, overflow and like brave gains. So what happens with this BT is it makes it so the party will gain a lot of brave when they're dealing HP attacks to help keep their damage up. And then he gives you a, a max brave overflow so you can get a lot more max brave. So it does help improve the damage overall. Now Snow was kind of known in the past for doing a cheese called Snow Overflow, where if you brought like really crazy like other max brave overflow and brave gain things and you did that like in a BT phase, you could get like insane max brave numbers. And basically his brave retain mechanic made it so that like your brave didn't go down and it was like this insane overflow and it would just stay there. I do believe that has been patched, so I think Snow Overflow is no more. But his just normal mechanic of the Brave Overflow and the Brave Gains, it's just really nice. It's it's a good mechanic, right? Um, so, and Snow is also an ice damage dealer, so if that's something you're looking for for ice damage. So, I would say, like, especially between Snow and Jesse, they both do, like, really cool things. Um, and I would say Jesse, as, like, a turn manipulator um, delayer, like, she's probably not the best at either one. Uh, but she does both of them, and that's pretty cool. Same thing with Snow. Snow's not the best damage dealer, and he's not the best tank, but he does both of them fairly well. So he's a good kind of like all-rounder type character that if you want that, he definitely can be a nice pickup. And, you know, we were a little thin on tanks this month, but we did have Beatrix, and then Oron was kind of a surprise. So I would say if you're looking specifically for a tank, I think I would still take Oron over him. Uh, but I think Snow can definitely fill the tank role while doing some good damage, while giving some really nice brave gain overflow and stuff to your party. So I think Snow is a very nice character. Now I'd say just like Jesse, he's a character uh, banner you can probably skip on. But what I'm going to say for this is veterans typically will have this guy built. So if you're a veteran that has him built, 100% I think you should take it as FR. 100% worth it. I think he's going to be a really nice FR BT character to have in your box. But I would say for a new player that hasn't built him or hasn't started him, I don't think you need to go in here on him. I think, once again, going for characters like Ignis, maybe Arciella, um, maybe a tank like Oron, like those I would probably rate above this banner, to be honest. But Snow's a very nice character, and I think for veterans... So, like, for me, like, this banner is like a win-win, right? Because I already have Jesse and Snow, like, green BT. I think I even have them both blue armor. So literally, I'm just getting Jesse's upgrade completely for free, and I just got a ticket Snow FR, and I'm good to go, and I got two really nice characters now that I can play around with. But yeah, for a new player, I would say you probably could skip these, wait for better things. We are going to be getting to the point now where, you know, we've got Cisne, we've got Arciella, and then all of a sudden, um, we're going to get, we won't get a community stream this month because of Thanksgiving, but Thanksgiving is close, and we're going to get in-game announcements for some new banners, and I know there's going to be some really good stuff coming next month. So I'd say if you can hold off, I, I would say these are banners you can probably skip. Save your resources for other characters. Uh, let me know if you guys are going to summon on these banners. Thanks for watching. We'll catch y'all on the next one.